Um, the 23 Nash Electric Code has added a requirement to use special purpose GFCIs. Now, in the 19, I think it's in the, in the 2020 code, I think it's the first time they started specifying using the word Class A GFCI. And when they came up with the word Class A GFCI in the 2020 Nash Electric Code, I'm like, in, why are they specifying Class A GFCI? Because according to the National Electric Code, there's a definition of what a GFCI, and that talks about the four to six milliamp years. And it also says in the informational note, rather, uh, of the definition, it says that uh, it is a Class A GFCI. Okay, whatever, so they added that fine. The 23 National Electric Code is adding requirements so requiring you to have special purpose GFCI. So special, see, GFCIs, the way class A, now I'm gonna use that word, a class A GFCI is only suitable when the voltage line to neutral or line to ground that we've ever established, right, doesn't exceed 150 volts. Well, if you have a 120, 240 volt system, well, the line to neutral voltage is 120. So it's fine, but if you had a 277, 480 volt system, which really didn't talk about those type of voltages, well, the line to neutral voltage of a 277, 480 is 277. They did not make, well, they don't make class A GFCIs for any more than a 120 volt circuit. So now when it got to 277, people are saying, listen, if you're providing ground fault protection for people when there's 120 volt circuits, but what about if the voltage is greater than 120 volts? You're not providing any protection at all. So what they did was in the 2023 National Electric Code, they added requirements, basically pretty close to the, I, I don't, I want to, I'm just going to say where it's over 150 volts of ground, or if it's 277 circuits, in many cases, they've added the requirement for GFCIs that were not there. But those are not class A GFCIs. Those are class B. Tom, are they class B? Which which one? The, the, the special, special purpose? purpose? They're class, I believe it's E and D. The B. That's doesn't... right, can't be B. Right. Right. All right. Yeah. And 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 the so so the important thing to remember too is that the four to six milliamp pickup is all about let go, not about defib. And right, right, right. these devices don't care about let go, they worry about defib. So, and that's why it's around 20 milliamps, I think, at 20, I think mm -hmm. it's 20 milliamps they mm -hmm. pick up. So around 20 to 30, if you look at the research that Dalil, Dalil. Dalil. Dalil did and, uh, and others, uh, they realize that the heart goes into defib around 20 to 30 milliamps. And, but here in the United States, we don't want you to get hung up. That's the terminology, right? So then that's when the current hold, holds you. And that's the four to six milliamps. So we're a lot more conservative in making sure that we take that current off before you, so you don't get hung up. But the special purpose is all about the defib. So that's the up. fundamental difference. You can yeah. still get hung up on it, but, and you know, all that jazz. Just, just a quick comment, Mike. You you were saying uh, doesn't protect circuits over 120 volts, which is right. But for the newer guys, and they go out and they see a two-pole breaker that's got a GFI on it, what you're talking about is voltage to ground. So yeah, you do have a two-pole breaker. It is yep. powering a 240-volt device. It may or may not have a neutral connected to the device. That's okay. It's the voltage to ground that we're protecting against, not 240 volt or 120 volt single pole breaker, two pole breaker. Well, the GFCI that's a class A, it needs 120 volts for the computer. Right. So I've seen people say, well, man, how can you use a GFCI on a hot tub? When I don't need a neutral, the hot tub is 240 volts. So you have to run a neutral to the equipment that you're plugging the GFCI in so that we right. can get a neutral so right. the computer gets its voltage. 
And if you don't need a neutral to the load, we, we, we haven't gotten into neutral currents, but we'll see later on. It doesn't really matter. If you don't need a neutral load, you can use a two-pole GFCI breaker, right, mm -hmm. without a neutral to the load. Right. But we have to have a neutral to the breaker. The breaker. Right. Which is why they don't work if you forget to hook up the little pigtail. With the little yeah. pigtail, it doesn't right. work because right. the computer, well, it works. It doesn't have GFCI protection. It doesn't have GFCI protection. And, and now some, some, some circuit breakers that are made today don't have a pigtail because they call those the plug-on plug neutral. Plug-on neutral, right. yeah. So you got to be careful. You, know, you may or may not have the pigtail. But on the special purpose, remember, this special purpose device was put in not for those 120, 240 volt. These are for like the three phase and the, the, the higher voltages. Yeah. And you have to, and you, you said it right in that slide, it says it limits the voltage across the body to 150 uh, volts, assuming that the body has a 500 ohm resistance, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. And to get that done, you may need to have a special uh, attention made to the equipment grounding conductor size and the length and whatnot, because they... The, the instructions for the device will have will tell you what size equipment grounding conductor because you're really concerned about making sure that you don't exceed 150 volts across the human body. Okay, it, that was information wow. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Wow. So is this what it looks like, Tom? That is a device, yes. So this is a, spur, a special, purpose special purpose GFCI. It's not like it's on a receptacle, the test and reset button. It's not like in a panel, the right. yellow button or red button, who knows whatever the color is going right. to be on that. And this is primarily, this can be used for three phase. This can be used for 277, 480 circuits. Uh, yeah. And these things can be quite large and quite sizable. So and we're, we're having that discussion right now. And it's because there's a new requirement in the code uh, for this. And I think it's on swimming pools. and. Right. There, 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 and, and I'm getting mixed messages because I, I don't make that device, but I'm getting mis mixed messages on the availability from a voltage perspective. Mm. They recognize a specific requirement, and, and it's at a specific voltage. And I'm, on one hand, I'm having somebody tell me that there's no product available. On another hand, I have someone tell me, I think there's product available. So there's still, uh, you got to research to make sure right that now. the product that you're applying is has the right voltage rating in for that application. Now. We are in the summer of 2022. We're mentioning conversations about the 2023 National Electrical Code. And I'm not really trying to get into the National Electric Code, but I'm trying to let you know that, that there are devices called special purpose GFCIs. And I'm sure, sure that not many people have a clue. And it's because it's going into the code book, I feel compelled to at least have this conversation with you so that you understand, oh, is, is it like a GFCI? Yes. Except what? Well, GFCI's class A are four to six milliampers. GFCI class E and F are going to be some milliampers that we're not sure of exactly what it's going to be, probably around 20 milliampers, which is, yeah, that's above the electrical threshold, uh, but, it, but it's, it's not above the ventricular fibrillation right. level. And so we're better off having some protection, even though we, you know, yeah. at least we can turn, it's only milliampers, so at least we can turn it off. And you don't want, you, and so the other thing is, you're at a different voltage, you're dealing with equipment that may have intentional, some leakage currents. So you, do, you know, in some cases, you may not be able to have a Class A device actually function because of the compatibility concerns, so. Well, yeah. let, let's just go with theory. If you raise the voltage, what happens to the current? goes down goes goes up oh so, goes sorry up. Right? goes up yeah. yeah raise a voltage the current goes up well if the current goes up and we we didn't do this but you said something tom you said way in the beginning you're talking about when we're talking about pressure you said something about a hose and it could be leaking you remember yeah yeah you can you can uh, rupture the case because yeah, it's yeah, too it much can, pressure so, well all wires have insulation it's not perfect. Electrons will travel through the insulation, okay, and it's going to, it's called leakage current. It's not going to be much. It's going to be, and there are standards in some equipment that says, listen, this equipment is not to leak more than a half a milliampers or two milliampers or whatever the case may be. Well, if you go to the voltage of 277 from 120 and everything being exactly the same, using the exact same insulation for everything else like that, well, you just took the voltage up, I don't know what it is, 2.3 times 
what it was, well, then the leakage current is automatically going to go up 2.3 times. So if it was a GFCI class A at 120 volts, and the leakage is 4 to 6 milliamps is what it's set for, let's say looking for, you take two and a half times that, you're close to 15 to 20 milliampers just simply because of the same properties of insulation. And, and so what we've learned, so, so as the, as, and I, I know we're not, this is not a code class, but as the code starts to increase the application of GFCIs, what we've learned is not all standards have that requirement yeah. around leakage yeah. currents. Right. Yeah. So the products, those end products, that they, they're, it's like a, uh, you know, it's the wild, wild west, right? So some people, some of the, the, the product manufacturers pay attention to it, some of them don't. And because there's nothing in the standard that's there to police that. And, and as we expand GFCI requirements, we're starting to uncover these uh, gaps in standards. And we're plugging them, but that takes a little time. All right, let me explain what he said. He's saying, look, we, we expand the uses of GFCI, which is looking for four to six milliampers. Well, when you start expanding that, we're expanding the requirements to apply to, and our, let's write now the 2020 code, expanded requirements to require basically in residential applications, the air conditioners to be on the GFCI. Well, the air conditioners, you guys have been doing air conditioners like forever. They don't have a standard limiting a certain amount of leakage. And their leakage is like around 20, 30, 40, could even be 50 milliampers. And so now the code requires GFCI protection of equipment that did not have a standard. And now where there's a, a, a conflict because the GFCI is going to always trip with that equipment. And in particular, we have a problem with, with uh, adjustable speed drive equipment because high frequently leakage is going to be greater than if it was just a regular light bulb. So as technology grows, as the code expands it, equipment is going to, and I tell you this because you might be on a job site somewhere and they're having this big conversation about the air conditioner keeps tripping the GFCI and everybody's all upset. Well, you will know, well, the reason the AC is tripping the GFCI is because the AC standard did not require that there be any limit on leakage. It's probably tripping because you have an adjustable speed drive type of air conditioner piece of equipment. GFCIs open between uh, four to six milliampers, and so you're like, so, so at least you have a knowledge of what's going on out there in the world. And it might be way above your head right now, and when you come back and watch it again, and you're on the job site, you're like, that is a adjustable speed drive. They ought to taught that it has higher leakage, and it's going to be above the four to six milliampers, and that's where we're having a problem. So. Uh, then manufacturers have to do what? Change the standards. Start making it less than, than what you're doing.